How's it going guys? <clears throat> it's Crazy Boy here. <clears throat> and welcome back to another video. <clears throat> I apologize that I sound like I'm dying. Um I actually have a concussion right now. So my head is pounding and I feel like shit. So if I don't sound right today, um I apologize. But if you're here it's because you read the title. The PTB is releasing today. One Wednesday. For chapter 11. And. We are going to go over the patch notes today. So what you guys are going to be seeing. Is whatever gameplay I threw in. <clears throat> um, I can't promise you anything. But. Um, what we're going to be doing. Is going through the patch notes. <clears throat> I want you guys to note. Here we are not covering anything about the new killer, the new power, um, the new killer's perks, the survivor perks, the new survivor, any of that. <coughs> if you want that, you can go check the description where I'll link the other video about the demise of the faithful chapter and all the information on that. This video is going to be about other things such as bug fixes, uh, perk reworks, and everything else. I'm just warning you now. This update, very, very, very killer-friendly. <clears throat> Especially with the perk reworks. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to skip past um, some of the shit that we already know. Okay, feature number one that uh, I really am happy to add in. They changed the character swap controllers from the left trigger, right trigger, L2, R2, whatever you, uh, if you play on PC, I don't know what it is, to left stick and right stick. So I'm assuming where you gotta press down on them. Um, and they disabled changing the active character feature with the character swap controls while the player is ready in a lobby. So this is done as an extra check to ensure there's no more accidental swaps. So pretty much what happens is when you're ready in a lobby, you it's impossible to go back and forth between your characters anymore. And that's done to make sure that <clears throat> you don't accidentally switch. Um, they modified progression display for certain daily rituals. So instead of showing the percentage in minutes, we're now showing them in seconds. So this is done for uh, rituals like blood dance, reconstruction rituals, uh, rite of ruin, wild dance, hunt rituals. So um, if you're being chased, it doesn't show that in minutes now, it shows it in seconds. <coughs> Emblem change. Killers got a massive rework that uh, advises against camping. And I don't like it. And I'll show you why in a minute. Chaser scoring. Proximity penalty has been increased. The longer the killer stays within a close proximity, 16 meters, to a hook survivor, the more points they will lose in the chaser emblem. That's good. I like that. That discourages camping. And it'll try and keep... it were, Because what they're trying to do, I see now, is they're working towards keeping the campers at lower ranks. And I will say they're working... They fixed the ranking system. I don't know how well it's going to work. But for Survivor, it is definitely harder to rank up now. Hopefully we will start seeing better Survivors at rank 1, guys. They fucking listened. <coughs> Devout scoring emblem. Emblem. The scoring thresholds have now been modified. Three kills now also result in a silver, whereas four kills result in a gold. To earn your iridescent, you must perform ten or more hook events and sacrifice all four survivors. Ten or more. But what happens if your survivors are mentally retarded and they don't go for unhooks? So what, then you're fucked? That's what it seems like. Gatekeeper scoring. Uh, scoring has been adjusted completely. Killers earn incremental points based on how few generators have been completed. Each minute for the first nine minutes of the match, regardless of how long the match takes, the longer the gems are not completed, the more points they are worth. At the end of the match, the killer also gains a bonus based on how few generators have been completed. Note, if the match is over before nine minutes is up, they receive points for remaining minutes up to nine based on how few generators have been completed at the end of the match. <clears throat> so pretty much, for the first nine minutes of your match, any gens that don't get completed are worth more. They give you a lot of points. <clears throat> if a match does not last 9 minutes, it compensates you for the 9 minutes, depending on how many gens were not fixed. <clears throat> um, and at the end, 
Still gives you the bonus for any times that weren't repaired. Gameplay. The intensity of the terror radius is now scale based is now scaled based on the vertical distance in addition to the horizontal distance. So it's um now works kind of vertically. So that's good for um maps like the meat plant. Um and like coal tower and some shit like that. Survivors entering the locker now have the blindness status effect applied to them, which is where you can't see auras because you can't see auras in lockers anyway. Um, so it's not right because lockers negate all the auras. <clears throat> Add a new scoring event for the perk, uh, for the perk-based stun events, decisive strike, and the new uh, exhaustion perk head one. If you want to know more about that, like I said, go check out the other video link in the description. Uh, worth 500 blood points, referred to as a killer stun in the game. Reduce the time penalty before a player can heal a player who has recently moved. This should allow players to start healing recently. Uh, healing a recently canceled heal quicker than before. So, um, if somebody breaks your heal, there's like a, normally a delay. They uh, made that shorter, so you should be able to start healing faster. <coughs> Killer perk changes. Here we go. <coughs> Survivor means get ready. I know this is what you all were, you all were waiting for. All of you are going to hate this. Killer perk changes. Barbecue and chili got a buff. Auras are revealed from 40 meters for all tiers of the perks instead of 52, 46, 40. Which means from now on at any tier, if you're out of 40 meters, you can be seen. That's a massive buff from 56 at tier 1. <clears throat> so now the only thing separating them is the blood point bonus. Massive buff. I think it's one of the attempts in trying to get rid of camping. I don't think it's going to work, but we'll see. <coughs> Distressing. All tiers award 100% bonus blood points, so the only difference is how big it expands your terror radius. That's a buff. Fire up. It got a buff. Each tier grants a stackable 2, 2.5, and 3% action speed bonus. So your tier... Makes it better now. <clears throat> Hex Devour Hope. Got a buff. Grants 3, 4, 5% speed boost with 2 tokens. Exposed status effect applied at 3 tokens. Kills are available at 5. Actually, no, okay. So Devour Hope kind of got a slight nerf. No, wait. No, it got a buff. <clears throat> I was wrong. Because it used to only work It's Tier 1 just gave you the kill option once you hit 5. Tier 2 gave you the exposed at 3. And then Tier 3 made all of them available. Now they're all available even at Tier 1. It's just the movement speed is differs. Which is stupid. <clears throat> Hex Ruin got a buff. And this is where a lot of people are going to have a severe problem. Hex Ruin. All tiers now affect all survivors. Which means, at tier 1, how it only used to affect two of you, and the other two would work on gens, guess what? Now tier 1 affects all of you. All four of you. To make Ruin more useful. And in addition to that, they, it now applies a penalty, and the levels uh, apply the penalty of 3, 4, 5% regression on good skill checks. Which means that if you only have a tier 1, it affects everyone, but if they hit a good skill check, it only regresses it to 3% instead of the 5% it used to. <clears throat> Hex Draw the Hunt got a slight buff. All tiers grant 10% bonus hunting blood points per remaining totem. Cleansing speeds are still the same. Monitor and abuse FOV values. This isn't really a buff, it's just a rewording. FOV values are 3, 5, 10 instead of slightly, moderately, and considerably. Also simplify the terror radius so that each tier modifies the terror radius <clears throat> by the same value, 8 meters instead of 6, 7, 8. Spies from the shadows got a nerf. Minor one, but a nerf, uh, granite. Added a 5 second cooldown when the perk triggers. Fanatophobia got a buff. And oh boy, is this going to be annoying. Tier values are incremented at a rate of 4, 5, 6% up to a maximum of 16, 20, and 24%. This is going to suck. 
Map changes. Um, procedural system changes. They added a new line of sight for totem spawn points within 32 meters from a survivor spawn point. So um, now you can't spawn in where you're looking at a totem, which is kind of good. Add a, a minimum distance of 48 meters between chest objects. Increase the minimum number of pallets to 8 per map. Distance between spawnable objects, generators, hooks, pallets, etc. are now scale based on a vertical factor in addition to the baseline horizontal distance, so it can't be one directly above another. Minimum distance between pallets was reduced for shelter woods maps. Hallelujah. Thank you, devs. Be sh uh, shelter woods is the McMillan Estate variation that has, like, no pallets. It's a lot of open space. Some gameplay object placement changed in the foundry. Some gameplay object placements changed on Water Tower Landmark Tile. Added door frames in the game map. Added new tiles to the Red Forest map. <coughs> Ranking changes. Here's it. Here we go. Where they changed the rank system. Hopefully, we'll start seeing better ranks now. Better um, good rank survivors at Red Rank again, and good rank killers at Red Rank again. We've made some changes to the emblem system that will affect the difficulty in which players rank up and subsequently maintain their rank. The rank groups colors. Now come their own pipping requirements, meaning for each different color rank, you have a different requirement. The higher you are, the harder it gets. The threshold increases through each rank group to the red ranks, making it more difficult to pip, double pip, and easier to lose a pip. See below. Rank 17 to 20. Beige. 0 to 8 points is 0 pips, because you can't de-pip. 9 to 13 points is 1 pip. 4 to 16 is 2. 13 to 16, yellow rank. 0 to 5 points, minus 1 pip. 6 to 9 points, no pip. 10 to 13, 1 pip. 14 to 16, double pip. 9 to 12, green rank. 0 to 6 points, D pip. 7 to 10 points, safety pip. 11 to 14 points, pip. 15 to 16 points, double pip. <clears throat> 5 to 8, purple. 0 to 7 points, D pip. 8 to 11 points, safety pip. 12 to 14 points, pip. 15 to 16 points, double pip. Ranks 1 to 4, red. 0 to 8 points, D pip. 9 to 12 points, safety pip. 13 to 15 points, pip. 16 points, double pip. <clears throat> Survivor perk changes. Y'all are not going to like this if you're a survivor me. I told you it was heavily in favor of the killers. I was not wrong. I was not lying. We have the decisive strike change, <clears throat> which, if you guys don't know what that is already, after being unhooked by another player yourself, decisive strike becomes active for 60 seconds. If you're grabbed by the killer while the perk is active, seating a skill check causes an automatic escape uh, and stuns the killer for three seconds. Succeeding or failing the skill check disables the perk for the rest of the trial. Succeeding the skill check and thus stunning the killer will result in you becoming the obsession. So it's getting a nerf. Empathy is getting a nerf. Empathy now works within a range of 64, 96, 128 meters for tiers 1, 2, and 3 respectively. Which means it no longer is unlimited for tier 3. There's no longer unlimited range for empathy. <clears throat> Live got a nerf. Remove the chase conditions. Live now only triggers on rushed vaults. Which means that you don't have to be in a chase anymore to trigger live. Some people might see this as a buff because their chase breaks and they don't get live and it fucks them. I see it as a nerf because now if I have to now if I have to fast vault something, it fucks me because I waste my exhaustion. Kindred. All survivors' ores are shown at all tiers. That's good. That's a buff. If the killer is within 8, 12, 16 meters of range of the hook survivor, the killer's or is revealed to all other survivors. Pharmacy got a buff. All tiers have a reduced audible distance of 8 meters. Wake up got a buff. All tiers reveal or is at 128 meters. That's pretty fucking good. Not that it matters, because who the fuck is still going to run it? It does help, though. You can't find a fucking door. That is extremely beneficial. I might start running that. Um, bug fixes, we'll touch on that just briefly. 
Fix an issue that caused play with your food tokens to be consumed when throwing a glass when throwing a gas bottle. There are some a uh, few things in this uh, thing that you might that you guys might want to listen to. Fix an issue that caused clowns bottles to disappear at the end of his reload. We want to go to the important ones. <clears throat> Fix an issue that caused a doctor not to see his illusionary palette or his when using order add-ons, which I actually just got today I know about, so I'm glad they're fixing that. Fix an issue that caused the hag's phantasms not to have a terror when her traps are triggered. Um... Matt Specific. Fix an issue allowed the hunters to throw hats through multiple car assets in the Auto Haven Records map, so they fixed their hitboxes. Um, issue from deep wound. Nah. Okay. Fix an issue that caused. Fix an issue that caused the safe hook rescue score events to trigger regardless of the state of the unhooked survivor which in turn caused improper benevolent emblem rewards so people were getting benevolent when they shouldn't have because the safe uh, the safe unhook was given to them regardless if they went down this means that free deliverance was given and this is not happening anymore and for all of you people who main the female survivors five Fix an issue that could cause female survivors to temporarily lose their running animation after pulling down a pallet, otherwise known as the ice skating. This is a big issue for a while because when you lose your running animation, you were actually slower. So, it was only a thing caused with female survivors, which I did not notice. Um, but that's getting fixed now. Um, perk fixes. Fix an issue that caused Bitter Murmur not to show all survivors ores when the last generator was repaired for less and for less than 5, 7, 10 seconds, respectively. Issue that caused Blood Warden to show survivors ores when outside of the exit after they left, um, and before requirements were met. Fix an issue that caused Calm Spirit to continue to alert crows. Um, this still will happen for the crow bombs and the backwater swamp maps. An issue that caused progress to regress when being interrupted from the action and failing the decisive strike uh, skill check. And it's just a lot of PTB known issues. Well, this video ran um, way longer than I thought, but I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope this was useful. If you liked it, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.